Greetings and welcome to another American Photo Tricks post-processing video. And today we're going to be learning how to use Sequator to stack Milky Way images and get rid of all that ugly noise when we shoot at high ISO. And this is specifically a post-processing video for our American Photo Treks customers who came out with us to 11 Mile uh, State Park uh, last weekend and photographed the Milky Way at the reservoir. And uh, for a while, we had just beautiful conditions. Uh, just the clouds seemed to form a perfect frame around the Milky Way. And then as time went on, those clouds just uh, overcast and took us over. But we did get some great images before that. So to everybody who came on the workshop, thank you very much for coming. Hope you had a good time. I know I did. And I hope this uh, video helps you create an image that you really, really like. So let's get started. I'm going to get started here in Adobe Bridge, which is what I use uh, kind of in place of uh, Lightroom library. <coughs> it's basically just a, a place where I can see my files and organize them and do all those kind of things. And uh, I've got a folder here that has uh, 13 images I took, one right after another of the Milky Way and uh, my tripod didn't move so they're perfectly aligned the one thing that did move was the clouds but uh, we're gonna we're gonna uh, work with that as we can now we're going to be using sequator now sequator only stacks either jpegs or tiffs so they do, it doesn't read raw files so that means that we're going to have to convert these to tiffs before sequator can stack them so what I've done here is I've selected, and by the way, you can follow along with every little keystroke I make right here. You can see exactly what I'm doing. And so I'll select my first image, scroll down to my last one, hit shift, that selects them all. Then when I double click, that automatically brings these images into Adobe Camera Raw. And Adobe Camera Raw, for those of you who use Lightroom, is just like the develop portion of Lightroom. And here you can see our raw image. It was taken at 20 millimeter ISO 10,000 for 13 seconds. And the reason I use such a high ISO is because I wanted to keep my histogram off the left side, and we just barely accomplished that. And uh, but I still wanted pinpoint stars, and it looks like we actually did a pretty good job of that too. So now. I like to pre-process my photos just a little bit before I bring them into Sequator. I find that works better for me when it's time to post-process the image. So I'll kind of walk you through what I do. And so first, um, the first and most important thing probably is the white balance. I shot all of these at ISO 3700. And as you can see, we got kind of a green tint here. So here, probably need to move this a little bit more towards the blue. That's too blue, but I'm going to get rid of some of that over by moving uh, my tint slider more towards the violet or purple, and then more this way. And I like a black-blue kind of sky, more like that. And as you can see, that brings out this amber color in the core in the Milky Way, which is closer to being realistic, but still looks good. And then once I've got that, now I'm just going to hit the auto button, which kind of levels things out in the foreground. Obviously, that makes our Milky Way too bright, so I'll bring down the exposure a little bit here. Um, but we've still brought up our shadows, and we've got a still got a good histogram here. And so really, again, this is just pre-processing. This is not the way uh, it's going to finally look. Now, clarity is definitely your friend when you're uh, processing a Milky Way image. And you can see it really starts to bring out that core and get you all that detail in there. So I like that, but you can't go too much. A little bit of texture and just a little bit of dehaze too, uh, but you can't go too much with that, about plus five. Everything else looks good. Now, this is an important part of the process here. Uh, go into your details. And you're going to notice it automatically does a little bit of sharpening. Just this is anytime you bring up a raw image, it does a little bit of sharpening and does a little bit of color noise reduction, 25%. I'm going to turn that down because I find when it does 25% color noise reduction, it winds up taking color 
out of some of the stars, I don't want it to take uh, color out. So I bring it down to about 15. I don't take it down all the way just because uh, it's just too noisy then. So I take it down to 15. Another real important part of this is the optics. And so the first thing I do is I use my profile correction. And you can see right then it knows uh, that I use the Sigma 20 1.4. And as you can see, it, what it did right there, it uh, got rid of the vignette and helped a little bit with the distortion. And, and I, I use that on all the photos. Then I also, I, uh, I'll look and see if I've got uh, chromatic aberration on my photos. And I do. I got a little bit of uh, purple and a little bit of green both. So I'll go ahead and click chromatic aberration, see if that gets rid of it. really didn't. So I see it's purple. So I'm going to move this a little bit. And that gets rid of that CA. I'm not going to want to get rid of, you know, 100% because then again it starts taking color out of everything else. Just enough to where it's not real pronounced. And then same with the green. See, I got some here that's got some green CA. And I'm going to get rid of that too. So I want to get rid of what's around the stars, but not the color in it. Because the color in it is actually the color of the star. So I'm going to do a little bit of that. And that's all I'm really going to do for my pre-processing. Now I want to apply that pre-processing to all of the photos. I just did it to one. So I'll just scroll down here, hit shift, and then my last photo, and that highlights them all. Now I just go to the three little dots right here and say sync settings. And that's going to sync all the settings from the photo I just processed to all the rest of these. And you can see it made all those changes. So now uh, I'm ready to save these as TIFFs so that I can bring them into Sequator. And to do that, you see this little arrow here, it's a square with a down arrow. You click on that, and here gives you your options for that. And I'm going to save in a new location, and I'm going to create a folder, in this case, TIFF folders with tint. And I, I'm going to remember that because I'm going to need it when I come into Sequator. And then uh, I'm going to leave the rest of the, the defaults, Adobe RGB 1998, 16 bits, and 300 uh, resolution. And then I'm just going to say save. I'm not going to do that because I already did this here uh, in, um, before we got on because sometimes it crashes my video. So I don't want to do that. Plus it takes a long time. So why waste time? So uh, go ahead and hit save. Save your photos and then uh, we'll be ready to move on. All right. Now we can start with Sequator. And this is Sequator, and I included a link to go get this. This is a free program for Windows. There's not um, a Mac version of Sequator, but there is a program called Starry Landscape Stacker for Mac. It's not free. I think it costs 30 some bucks, and it does essentially the thing, same things, but works differently. I'm not familiar with Starry Landscape Stacker, so fortunately I'll just be showing you Sequator. And Sequator is easy. I think here we're we're using, let's see, what is it, version 1.5.4. I don't know if that's the newest one yet, uh, but it works just fine. And the great thing about Sequator is you just start at the top and work your way down. It's as easy as that. So here, and uh, it highlights the uh, the things that you're going to need to stack your images. So you see that the top star images is highlighted with red right there so I just double click star images so here there's my uh, those are my TIFF files that we just created I'll click the first one here I already did some stacking so just to make sure everything worked shift and the last one and that takes all 12 photos or uh, 13 photos that we stack that we uh, uh, save to TIFFs now I'll hit open and it loaded all of them up. Now it automatically grabs one that it calls a base image. And basically that's the image that it says, this is the one I'm going to work around and it's going to look most like when it's done. Now if you've got, if you see that and you don't like the base image that it uh, picked, you can go in here and say, well, maybe the clouds, you know, looked better in another image. Let's try number nine and we'll make nine my base image. Nah, they all kind of look the same, but anyway, that's what it's for. 
Now it says you don't need noise images, uh, you don't need vignette images, so the next thing you need that's highlighted is output. And this is important because it won't work without it. So you double click on output and now you have to create a name for the file that's output. And I'm going to call mine stacked 11 mile with 10. I've already done one, so I'm going to call this 11 mile with 10 dash 2 and just say save. All right, so now I've I've named what my output file is going to be. And the next thing you do here is what's uh, highlighted, and you go right there to composition align stars. And you do want to align stars. That must be checked. Accumulation. And now this is really important. If you forget this, it's going to make a mess of things. So you have to click freeze ground. And in that case, selective is going to come up. And then uh, now you've got to tell it what's ground and what's sky and once you click that freeze ground you'll notice sky region now was highlighted so now click on sky region and here you're going you could have three boundary line gradient irregular mask I always use a regular mask it's just easiest for me and what that does is it creates a brush you can see the brush right here and I'm just going to take my brush and tell it where the sky is and the great thing here is you don't have to be super specific about it. Just generally where the sky is. And you'll notice I am including the cloud with this. If you didn't, it would try and freeze the cloud. And then as it moved, it would just look like a mess later on. Now, you can make this circle smaller by rolling the dial on your mouse and bigger. And also, let's say you paint somewhere you didn't mean to, like right there. Just click the right button on your mouse, and then that turns it into a where it deletes your mask. And that's as, that's as specific as you have to be. Generally, here's my sky, here's my foreground. And now you're ready. You can choose to reduce distortion effects. I leave that on auto. Now you're ready. You just hit start, and away it goes. And it doesn't take long. And when it's done, you're going to see our completed image. And it does 13, just a few seconds, one at a time. And I can't pause it here because, again, this is something else that will crash my video. So uh, that is really frustrating for me because it doesn't give me a video that I can then just piece together with another one. i got to start all over. So that makes my head explode. <laughs> So there it is, and there is our stacked image. And you can see it just kind of smoothed out this cloud. And this is now our base image that we're going to use to post-process. I'm just going to close this out right here. No, I'm not going to save that. And here, what I did here is I took our pre-stacked image and loaded it as a layer over our stacked image in Photoshop. Now we're going to zoom in right about here. So here is the image before it was stacked in Sequator, and here's the image after. And as you can see, it got rid of a lot of noise. A lot. So stacked, not stacked. And there we are. And so that's the primary purpose of stacking images. It's just to get rid of noise, and if you stack them, then you can use shorter, um, shorter exposure links, so you get nice pinpoint stars instead of streaky stars and higher ISOs. And I hope you find this helpful, and uh, if you did, please give it a like, and if you like these, please subscribe to my channel. And I hope you guys are having a great summer, and I hope now that uh, COVID's over or almost over, we can get out there, do a lot of shooting, start really enjoying ourselves. So you guys have a good one, and see you later.